So as of last week, the Gemini team added a new file search tool that allows you to create managed drag applications directly through the API. In the last video, I took you through the broader level architecture and the workflow. In this video, I want to actually go much deeper. I want to show you exactly what's happening under the hood, the specific functions that Gemini uses to actually automate the rack steps within the API call. So you can go out and build your own managed rack solutions using this. All right, so to make it super clear to all of us, I built this live interactive application that will actually guide us through the end-to-end -end process of Gemini File Search API. So how does this really work? I mean, before we get into this, you know, think about this, right? So any RAG system is all about grounding your large language model with your data. So it all starts with data. And Gemini File Search API is different in how it manages the process of handling that data. So if you look at, this is how the traditional RAG pipeline goes, right? So we ingest the data, and that's where we do a bunch of chunking and splitting of text into tokens. And then we create the embeddings, which is deep vector representation, and then store those embeddings in the vector database, right? So that is the hard part when you are creating a RAG yourself. And then comes the second phase where you are retrieving the information, right? So at runtime, when the user actually queries, we will convert that query to the same vector space and then we will do a comparison of what the user had asked and what we have got. And then based on that, we will have an answer. Now, when it comes to Gemini API file search tool, you can see that all of the steps are actually automated for you. The only key step required is to create the file store. So with that in mind, let's look into the demo now. So when you think of the file search store, it's really broadly four different steps, right? And most of these are automated for you. So the first step is to create the file store itself. So this is something which the developer would be creating for us in the backend, or in this case, I've asked the application to create it for me. Think of this as the persistent place where Gemini is going to index and store your data, right? So that is really the first step, which is where you are going to create the file search store. Now you can see here, this is the specific function that is being called. So in this case, let's say I'm going to create something like that. So you can see that now the display name is this. So I'm going to click on create store. So it has done that. Now, the second step is going to be uploading the file. Once you upload the file, it basically is uploading the file into the file store that we just created. You could also use an existing loaded file and then import it in, into the file store. So you can do it wh whatever and however you want. So in this case, I'm just going to upload a file here, which is this particular file, which was recently released. And it talks about introduction to agents. We have these authors and these are, let's say, a 51 page document. So that is what I'm going to upload here. So Gemini File Search also provides the capability for you to control the chunking. So this is an advanced configuration that you can also do if you need to, but this is definitely a possibility. And then you can also define like custom metadata so that if you're uploading multiple files or you're loading an existing file, this can be taken care. So all of these are part of the advanced capabilities or controls that you will have access to. So in this case, I'm just going to upload the file. And as soon as I do that, here we've got an error. So let me just correct it. So now I'm going to run it again. So now it's uploading. And what it is really doing is it is now indexing, right? And the whole chunking process is happening as we speak now. So it, it has done its job and it has indexed it. And you saw that it is it was like a 51 page document. So you saw how quickly it was able to do it. This needs to happen just once, right? Because this is the indexing piece. So once you're building these, these racks, so this will, the whole process is going to be offline. And then once you are done, you have now you're on the last step, which is you're able to query. So let me ask this, who are the authors? So when I'm typing this, it actually goes into here where I've specified this is my model and this is what I'm searching. So this will now get converted into, into an embedding and it should be able to retrieve that. So that is what is happening. And here we go. The, the authors of this are Alan Bound, Antonio. So let's see if these are the authors. And uh, here we go. So yeah, this, these are exactly the authors there, right? So it, it is doing a fantastic job in terms of getting the results. Now, again, it, it may look like this is something which is very common and there are a lot of these kind of tools available. I know Notebook LM does pretty similar things. The key difference here is you are actually enabling all of these things via the API itself without creating all of those five different steps that we discussed. Before, you were not able to do this as part of the API, but now you are. So if you want to look at the details here, right, so you can see this is the documentation where you can get all of the code for both Python and JavaScript. So I explained you how you can upload to the file store, then how do you import the files as well. And then this is a chunking configuration that we just discussed as well. So you can change it. So I had requested AI Studio to, to have all of this. 
And this is the process that we had discussed before. So if you really look at this, what we just saw was the overall indexing process, which happens offline. And then it was stored in the file store, which was the database. And then the user asked a question and then the question was converted into embedding and all of that. So all of this happens as part of the API and that is like super abstraction for you. The file store, the one where it will keep the raw files for a reference for 48 hours, but then the file search store itself remains till the time you actually delete it. So that's an important piece of information. We talked about the file metadata as well. And then citations are another possibilities. You can simply uh, add this command line and it should be able to give you citations. These are the two models that it is supporting. These are all different application files which it supports. So it's pretty, pretty exhaustive. You can support PDF, SQL, a lot of Microsoft files as well. And these are all different types of text files. My assumption is they're going to keep adding this as we as we continue to expand on the features. And then these are the rate limits, right? Maximum file size per document is 100 MB. Total project file search store is there are different limits. The tier three is one terabyte, which I believe is a pretty strong one. And this is project file search store, right? Per on a use user basis or a user tier. So again, the thought process is if you're really looking at an enterprise rag managed rag system, then you have other solutions like Vertex AI, which allows you to have managed rag at an enterprise level. But if you're looking at building smaller applications where your requirements are up to one terabyte of data, which I believe is pretty, pretty large, you will be able to do this pretty quickly as part of the API itself, right? And everything is connected to your Gemini API, which is connected to your Google Cloud tenant. So it will honor the guardrails from a security perspective and confidentiality perspective. So those are all the things that, because it's automatically connected and the pricing is also very generous. The storage is free of charge. Query time embeddings are free of charge as well. The only charge here is the indexing, which is 0.15 per 1 million token. So I think that's very generous as well. And it really allows and opens up a lot of possibilities for developers to go ahead and build something like this. All right, I hope this was helpful. This deep dive should have given you a good understanding of the details of the file search tool and how you can go ahead and leverage it. I'm going to leave the link to the documentation in the description. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. If you like the video and this added value to you, please also let me know in the comment section. Please do hit that like button and please do subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.